Hey Toads, how you doing Toby? You're full of it this morning. Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm cold, it's cold. It's 37 degrees outside right now. I have a cold front moving in. Getting the plants loaded up, which I probably should have done last night. I looked at the, the extended forecast, like the day night thing, instead of looking at the hourly. I didn't realize that the cold was rolling in during the daytime. That's not usually how it works, you know? So when it said that there was a low of 29, I assumed that that meant tonight and tomorrow morning, not at like 11 a.m. So here we are. Uh, it's okay. Not the end of the world. These already were looking shabby from shipping. Got the heliconias ready to go. I need to pack up all the annuals. They got to come in. The mule palms and windmill palms and restratas. Those things will all be okay. I should probably cover the bulbs up for sure. Should cover those up. And then this thing. Oh, uh, the Japanese maple. Yeah, I think 29 would probably do that in. And it's supposed to start snowing here in like an hour snowing sleeting frozen mix kind of situation man that thing is heavy but i guess it's gonna come inside regardless because i don't yeah that wouldn't be good for that plant i will throw some frost cloth over the tops of these hydrangea trees right that seems like a good idea i should do that my buckeye is just starting to bloom they don't like to focus i don't know what to do about that this is way too wide i don't know how i could possibly cover that entire plant up goes from down there to all the way up there. Well, that's unfortunate. My fingers crossed and hope for the best. Same thing with the fatsias, not fatsias, the pedicets down here. These, I don't, there's no way to cover these up. There's just too many of them. Might lose the flowers over here in the skip laurels. That would be really unfortunate. These have had the most spectacular bloom this year. I mean, they look fantastic. Smells really nice. And at nighttime, all those white flowers bounce the light back and make things look really bright and pretty back here. Kind of ethereal even, but I don't, I don't know. But it's going to be 27 to 29 degrees. Guess we'll see. This is why I hadn't moved the tropical plants out yet, because I knew, I knew better. I was like, hey, don't do it. That's a really bad idea. Because we just never know what the weather is going to bring. I have all kinds of things over here loaded up. Got all the dahlias ready to go, and those definitely can't take the cold. That would destroy them. Whole bunch of annuals. I haven't even unloaded most of the annuals from the car for the plant haul that was last weekend. I'm starting this video before that video even comes out. I mentioned I was going to have the family in town and everything, so I thought, well, I can start this vlog off like a week and a half, almost two weeks early, and we can go through the little things as they happen. going to be a true vlog. I don't have plans for this video at all, none whatsoever. I mean, I can't see that far into the future, so I'm just, just going to go with the flow of things. I did cheat and turn the pool heater on, so hopefully that's going to help with just like the ambient area but there's only so much that can be done especially when a cold front's moving in and it's really really breezy lots of fresh stuff coming up here out of the bananas It'll be okay though i mean the fresh growth may die back but what's down there should be just fine and what's really exciting is the gingers are starting to come up remember these are what i was the most worried about and was thinking that they probably didn't survive that cold in february but looks like they did so that's something that i can be excited about but i do want to make sure that that fresh growth is covered pretty well because well you know 29 it might get down to 27 so make sure that's nice and blanketed yeah that's all i'm just starting the vlog off with a whole entire why 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 i gotta move the plants in again wow it is really cold you like the cold don't you toby isn't that nice yeah he thinks it feels good that's all that's how life is starting for me this week <laughs> just gonna move everything into the garage which should be interesting because the garage is getting pretty full but not a big deal. We'll pick back up later when I actually like get to doing something fun and exciting, if that even happens. I don't know. Not really doing a lot around here. Just gotta wait for this stupid cold to pass and for spring to actually get rolling, right? Hey, Pumpkin. Yeah, she's been like, what are you doing? I've had this door opening and closing and opening and closing because I've been moving plants in. Got some pothos there. Not hating having the Japanese maple in here. It's actually really beautiful and I'm enjoying it. I just figured the snow, it's snowing right now. I don't know if it's going to show on camera, but it's snowing. That probably wouldn't be good for the foliage on here, right? Got the artichoke seedlings there in here. Spring planter, 
hanging out in the corner just because the, there was nowhere else to put it. I didn't want things spread around too uh, haphazardously, but there just wasn't much of a choice because there wasn't space for everything. You wouldn't have a random orchid sitting up there, which I, hopefully we'll not forget that that's up there. And I think I'm gonna do another check here, sweep through, make sure I didn't forget anything, but I think, oh, no, no, no. Okay, good thing I did this. Totally forgot about the impatience and the colladium bulbs. Fatsias should be okay. I'm going to throw a frost blanket over the top of the tree fern back here. And uh, I think it's actually snowing a bit too hard for me to even have this camera out. It's really coming down. I don't know, can you see it? See the snowflakes and the ice? It's more ice crystals right now. It's little chunks of ice. Palms should be okay. The queen palm has been, been blah. The queen palm has been down below 29 on multiple occasions and had snow on it. So I'm not really that worried about that one. And it's up against the house, a little bit more protected over there. I mean, I don't know what the other option is. I guess I could try and lay it down and throw a cloth over it just to be safe. Maybe I'll do that. And then I'm gonna take some frost cloth and get it on top of the bananas. I'm gonna do my best to just hopefully get those covered as much as I can. I just don't know if I have enough frost cloth. Yeah, I don't know. This is a bunch of garbage not thrilled about this happening. I don't remember it ever snowing this late in April before. Oh well, it is what it is. If I put a cloth over the top of these ferns, it's just gonna smash them. So, uh, maybe I'll put a dome on them. Yeah, well, at least it's pretty. Not thrilled about it though, but it is what it is. I was gonna go out and show the stuff I got covered, but I just took a shot. Wait, wait, you're not supposed to just run out the door. What's wrong with you, buddy? Buddy? Okay, he's having fun. He can stay, but we have rules. You don't just run out the door. You're supposed to sit and wait. Got bananas covered. Snowed on anyways, may as well go through it. More things covered. Laid the queen palm down. And I threw some pots over the tops of some of the more delicate things. It is kind of fun. Not gonna lie. I, I love snow. It's pretty. And since it wasn't a big deal to get everything covered up, I'm not really mad about it. It's fine. It's only for a couple of days, and most of this isn't going to stick, at least not to the pavement or the streets, I wouldn't think. Uh, but I, who knows? Could be wrong. It, it is unfortunate that some things probably won't make it through this, like the pedicets down here. We already talked about those. They're not, well, they're already not looking too good, are they? Yeah, that stinks. There's really nothing I could do for these. It's just that space. I and mean, it's like a good 18 feet here. I don't know what I would have done for these. So they'll die back and should shoot back up when it warms up again. What a bummer though. And it's, it's, these started growing in early March. This is like a six week setback. But imagine the dune grass probably isn't appreciating this either. It's more the trees and the spring flowers that like the right here of the Eastern red bud. That's not going to appreciate this at all. The Japanese maple over here, it's all wilty and so sad looking. This dogwood, isn't it absolutely beautiful? I love this tree but snow and ice and 28 to 29 degrees and i'd imagine that's probably not going to look too pretty in a couple of days but i don't know keep my fingers crossed check back in a few days snow's gone and picking up with my phone here camera's inside charging had four batteries and None of them were charged, go figure, but that's okay. Uh, this isn't really even all that important. I think everything should look just fine. I only noticed a little bit of damage from the cold. It was two nights of freezing temperatures. Almost broke a hundred year, nearly hundred year record, but not quite. The area got down to, I think 32 and the record was 31, something like that. So I probably didn't even need to cover this queen palm up, but I figured with the snow, and the moisture, if there's gonna be enough snow to cover things, not a queen palm, but other things like those scrub palms over there, that can help insulate them, but not so much just having it settle in the crown and just freeze and thaw and freeze and thaw. That allows bacteria to grow and causes problems. So I'm gonna uncover this, get it popped back. I don't really think we need to go over reversing everything I just did, right? A little bit of damage on this ostrich fern because the cover got knocked off by a doggie. These right here stayed covered and they look okay. The most notable thing would be this crepe myrtle. That's toast. It should flush back out, but that's that's not good. That's not a very happy plant. There's a bud coming up from one of the gingers over here that I thought I had covered, but apparently not. Or maybe that's a new one and one of the other ones is over. It looks okay, that's the whole point. <laughs> and then these bananas looks like part of this got 
blown off already. You can see there is a rotten growth in there. Just the tip though, the stuff that's down further should be okay and it's still kind of firm. There's more banana stuff going on over there. The big growths, wow. Wasn't expecting that at all. I figured that at least this up here would be toast, but it looks okay. There's some rotten goo in there, but again, not a big deal. That I could, I could just cut that off. I'm just gonna leave it for right now though. I'm more surprised that that leaf's okay. But this is a warmer spot up against the house. There should have been a nice little warm, bubbly, you know, microclimate situation there. Looks like that paid off. They look okay. The coldest temperature that I saw on my sensors, sensor, I only have one sensor left in the backyard, the rest of them uh, have been moved in, was I think 38 last night and then 40 the night before. And that sensor's like over in a corner, so probably not a totally accurate depiction of how cold it was, but I mean, it's I doubt that there was a 12 degree difference between that end of the yard and uh, like uh, those other things we just saw. The Pedicets, Japonicus, well, they don't look great, do they? But it's okay. They should flush back out. We'll give that some time. I think I've already talked about these. Didn't we just do an update like right before this one? I don't even know. Things are all spread out and yeah. Anyways, that's been fun. But now, garage overflowing with plants. <laughs> Need to bring those back out. And a few more days later, say bye-bye, buddy. Buddy's leaving tomorrow, going home. Gonna be really sad to see this guy go. Now, you know, I love my sisters and I always like to make sure to send them home with plants. That's just a friendly thing to, and I got bored in nail art, not art, but a failed attempt at pretty nails happened. Don't worry about it. Anyways, they have a new house and we talked about like some things to make it look nice and said, hanging basket, I have tons of plants. Let's toss together a hanging basket. And I really do mean toss. This is going to be a quick throw together. Go get the tripod set up, pick out some plants. Dragon's wings, these should be good. This table's getting a little bit crowded, see that? Got some cold damage on the fatsia. That's okay, the crown's still healthy. That's just, I know, that's neither here nor there. Basket, that's, that's a basket. I had thought about putting two of these begonias in here. This is kind of a small basket. I have some larger, um, I wanna say 14 inch ones, but I don't know like your hooks and the weight. And I learned the hard way recently about the weight being off, so maybe keep this small. This is go really gonna fill out. Which one is that one in the middle? This is a dragon's wing begonia. This oh, alone, yeah, this one plant will fill out this entire thing. So well, I need to transfer it to a bigger pot maybe. Maybe. Okay, that's fine. Maybe. No, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab a bigger basket. Are you sure? Yes. No reason to go small when you have something bigger, right? Besides, I'm pretty sure this is a 12, maybe a 14 inch. That is a fairly standard size. It's just a little bit more cautious since that other one came tumbling down. Some continuous release. Okay, that's more than enough of that. A little bit more soil. Maybe a lot more. There we go. Bring the wires together a little bit more so that continuous release is in there. There we go. I'm still gonna just do one dragon's wing because they get huge. Diamond Frost Euphorbia also gets huge. I probably don't need to put two of these in there, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's not gonna look right with just one. Yeah, but you can come over. You're fine. I heard you talking, but I didn't know if you were talking to yourself or filming. Oh, you couldn't tell I was talking to myself while I was filming? Yeah. Well, it's kind of the same thing, isn't it? I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, not really, but I'm sure the neighbors have wondered about my sanity for a long time if they can't see the camera out here. <laughs> wow, that is heavily rooted. Why do you say that? Which is because it's, oh, okay. it's a big root ball, that's all. It's not really heavily rooted in there. It's just a... What's that one? This? I forgot. Do you not like it because you no, made a I face? Like... No, no, no. I'm Are not... you sure? No, I was, trying to, re okay. I was trying to remember. It's Creeping Jenny. Oh, that's right. The creeping yeah. Jenny. Okay. Creeping okay. Jenny because I don't understand your sun exposure and neither do you. So it's everything in here can go morning and afternoon. Okay, good. I know you already know so I'm repeating it because... It helps me. Well, no, the camera's on. Oh. Yeah. This will all be in the vlog. Hope you're okay with that. Hey, everyone. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> with Creepy Jenny, Dragon... Dragon's Wing Begonia. Let me make sure I have these tags, right? That's important. There's a pink Dragon's Wing Begonia. Yeah. Right there, see how big that gets? Yeah. It's really big and full. Like, that literally, that would be fine just to have the one in there. So be okay to repot it, possibly. If you need to, yeah. And then there are two Diamond Frost Euphorbias. Euphorbia. 12 to 18 inches. They get big and airy. They help 
add dimension to the planters. They just kind of get it to be a little bit more dramatic. And then the Creeping Jenny. This is a perennial. Okay. So, creepy Jenny. Yeah, Creepy Jenny. That's a good way to put it. Euphoria with a B. Right, Euphoria. Euphoria with a B. There you go. That's Euphoria. right. Euphorbia. What's going to go there? Uh, another Creeping Jenny. Because symmetry. Yeah. yeah. And I think flower wise, Terrinias would be great in here since I don't fully understand your light, but I don't have those. Okay. Went, to two, went to two nurseries today. They didn't have anything like that either. I feel like this is boring without flowers though. But the, the begonia will flower. Yeah, the begonia will definitely yeah. get big and flowery. And that's okay, it'll be on the road, so. Yeah, that's the other thing. This is about to go on a 12 hour road trip, right? Yeah, so 13. don't 13 hour road trip with a layover overnight. You'll be back on the road before it gets hot, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So you can leave that in the car. Yeah. And uh, um, I don't know. I have, you know petunias, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, well I have some Super Petunia Vista bubble gums. Super Petunia? Yeah, we'll call it a Super Petunia, that works. Um, but they get huge i could i have a ton of extras the super petunia. yeah so i can put one and the nice thing about them is they will keep blooming in low light they don't look as great but if it turns out to not be as sunny there they'll probably still flower for but you they won't look bad, right? yeah and I, i've seen enough pictures to know that your front porch isn't dark right um it's just i don't understand what time of day it's getting the most light and then trees influence like yeah, how the light's yeah. coming through also so i'm gonna put a couple of super tunias one right here and one right there but they really, they're the same ones we put in these planters around the pool. Oh yeah. And I mean, you've seen like just one of those yes. gets. That's the one that Tucker would. Right. Yes. Yeah, the ones that Tucker always kept pruned for us. Yes. So, uh, let's do that. Super Tunia Vista Bubblegum. I also just realized I at no point checked to make sure that the camera was in focus or pointed in the right direction. <laughs> to unplant everything. No, I'm not gonna do that. This is a vlog. Take, take it easy over okay. here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me too. Much more laid back. If something's ever out of focus, either just don't use it or I'll put something on the screen saying, don't worry about it, it'll get better in a minute. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down, internet, it's fine. This ain't HGTV here. We don't have that budget. This is the Bubblicious Super Begonia. <laughs> Bubblicious Super Petunia. Yeah. I enjoy that. Um, Super Petunia Vista Bubblegum. And these don't have a tag. Oh wait, yes it does. There we go, I'll put this tag in there. So all the tags are right in here. Thank so you. if you get confused, so much. there they are. So this will like overcrowd yeah. at some point. You'll need to prune it up. Okay. And around, uh, I would say mid to late July, okay. they like to be uh, cut back somewhat and they'll start to get leggy. You can oh, cut them back, cut like 50% off the plant. That's good because I wouldn't know. I'd be like, it looks good. I should just let it do its thing. Yeah, well, I mean, to be honest, I think that that's something a lot of gardeners, we tell people, yeah, you need to do that. And then we most, a lot of us don't do it. Oh. I forget to do it all the time because I had Tucker doing it for me. <laughs> yeah. And so this year I'm going to have to like really remember, like yeah, I actually do need to prune them. And yeah. like these nicer, like hybridized, super hybridized varieties that just bloom and grow no matter what you do. Yeah. You don't necessarily have to, but if you just notice they're getting leggy or out of control, then you can do that. And then the other thing I was going to say is that if it looks like these are really crowding things out and like the begonia is starting to, things are just getting smothered, you can take these creeping jennies out. Yeah. You can plant them just about anywhere Ooh. where you live, but okay. they will take over if you get them in your lawn. So if I want, okay. But you can, any planters that you have or anything, you can just tuck them into the edge of something, it'll trail over. Ooh, that would look, yeah. I like that. Yeah, and they do they, like... They're friendly, they're friendly to, other, to whatever it's with. I mean, they will, if there's a lot of other ground covers, they'll yeah. take over. But it won't like, it's not like the sweet potato where it will... No, eat it's not like the sweet potato <laughs> vines where they're nutrient hogs. Yeah. Uh, the only thing about them is they're very thirsty plants. Okay. So like, you don't have to keep them sopping wet, but if you have if a you spot have where a, there's a lot of water retention, yeah. then that's a good option for that. Okay. Yeah, and I will hopefully be out there yeah. At some point, to so if it gets out of control, I'll be there to help you with that. But I mean, have it. right? But I mean, it's a hanging basket. It doesn't need to be complicated. Oh, we'll see. No, it doesn't need to be. <laughs> Just remember, if something goes wrong, it's probably my fault because I put too many plants in here. I'll probably try to feed a Gatorade or something. So be like, it looks like it needs electricity. Yeah. <laughs> I as did. As long as it's blue Gatorade. I did. I put a bunch of continuous release fertilizer in there. Thank you. Um, so it should be good for a while. They say like 
six months on some of those. I don't, yeah, it says protects, feeds for up to six months. Oh, I don't, stuff? Yeah, yeah, I don't, I think that that's a lie. You can't, it's for, because you can't prove it and the container, like it's mm -hmm. clear mm -hmm. and you never know if like it was sealed all the way. So I generally say with annuals that are heavy feeders like the Vista bubble gum, mm -hmm. just if you need to fertilize it, go for it. Okay. Cause they are, petunias are really heavy feeders. Cause they're super petunias. Cause they're super petunias. I mean, all petunias really do need a good amount of fertilizing to keep them looking nice. And you can use a fertilizer that's made specifically for petunias so that they can get all the phosphorus or phosphate that they need. I have left a clip in here. I don't know if that's gonna go in. There we go. Oh, but anyways, what I was getting ready to say is I did add a, just a smidge bit of compost and earthworm castings into the soil that's in here. So that's going to help somewhat with moisture retention and uh, um, help keep things fertilized and What's fed. Earthworm did you add earthworm eggs in there? Yes, it's earthworm eggs. Is it really? No, it's poop. <laughs> Earthworm poop. The stuff that was on the table, and I said, let me get off the table before we sit down. It's the opposite of eggs. Yes. Okay. Why, is that the opposite of eggs? Well, I mean, I think, eggs I think is like the opposite of eggs. and poop is like dead life. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. This will be edited <laughs> out. <laughs> this is good stuff. This is gold, I tell you. It's gold, okay. So yeah, there we go. I love it. Hanging baskets take a while I to start it. doing their thing, but with the exposure, I think that this will be good. I love it. Probably. I hope Buddy won't pee on it in the car. He might pee on it in the car, but hey. <laughs> I might have to put it in the front seat so he can't so he'll be monitored. I, you think he'll... I don't think he will. I don't think so, but I see him. Like, it's logical to him. It is. <laughs> yeah, I could see... Thing. Buddy could see this and go, let me pee on that. It's I'll just, possible. I'll just make sure we get lots of bathroom places. This begonia, I don't want to water this in too heavily since you're about to take it on a road trip, but this begonia is thirsty. Okay. So I'm going to give it a drink. Just, yeah. yeah, I'll give it a little drink. There you go. And chances are in a few months, this will be a big begonia in the middle and just like one massive thing of petunia. Yay. Feel free to take this out and drop petunia. it into okay. a different planter anywhere like that you think it would do all take shade or sun. Just keep it watered. It is beautiful. Yes. I love it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeesh, what a mess. Little whirly copter things everywhere. Those maple trees. They know how to coat the ground, don't they? Sorry, it's because it's nice and breezy because there's a warm front move in. It's hard to believe just a few days ago it was snowing and now it's like 83 degrees and glorious outside. Some plants, not so happy about that weather, but is what it is. They'll be okay, especially once that heat kicks in, they'll do much better. I didn't leave those heliconias out in the cold, but they just went through a lot. You know, they were shipped and then it was cold and then they were in the garage and it was cold in the garage, but not like too cold, not cold enough to kill them, but you know what I mean, then bring them out. It's the whole thing, they'll be fine. The day after we just threw together that basket, I hope that that was even usable and able, like you were able to see it. I went ahead and just set this on the tripod and since, tripod, tripod. And since I had my sister with me, I wasn't really paying attention. I think that my arm may have been in the majority of those shots. I don't know. I haven't even attempted to edit that footage yet. Had family in town for the past week as everybody's aware, because I've said it over and over and over again. And uh, now, but he's gone, he's gone home. He's off back to getting to stay with his family and things are gonna, get into a new normal here, which is great. Great for everybody. I know my sister's been looking forward to getting her dog back now that they're all moved in and settled into their new home. I can't imagine being without my dog for four months. That must have been so hard for them. And now the weather's turned around so we can start doing some fun things out here. Look at how great these are doing. Yeah, just not long ago, y'all saw them all smashed down and wilty and then a few days later they were still kind of wilty and boom. They just popped back up. They're looking fantastic. I absolutely love these, which everybody knows. I'm obsessed with these things. Great plants. If you need something that's gonna take over a spot, this is the plant for you. It was just so nice to see that the ice and the snow didn't kill those off. It's the last week of April. This video comes out May 1st. And it, traditionally that's when I do the garden tours for the month. And I've been debating whether or not to bother with the April garden tour. Not much has changed. You know, because April was just kind of a crummy month. I mean, I thought the weather was beautiful, but it wasn't like that great for growing plants. It was pretty cool. The weather was just kind of blech. So not much has changed. The bananas did some growing and um, some gingers popped up, but that's, that's, that's it. 
nothing else has really happened out here. So I just feel like if I were to do a garden tour for April, it'd be kind of phony and not very genuine. I'd be phoning it in just to make sure that I have a tour for every month, which seems kind of silly, right? I'm not gonna do that. And I just, look, bananas, they've done some growing. They're okay. I have a Hedicium coming up back there. Lots of silver lace vines. I need to pull out of here. That's always a thing in the springtime. Stuff takes over if you don't control it. Crinum lily popping up from the mulch, looking fantastic. Got the two new sables that need to be planted. Y'all already know about them. And then another ginger coming up right there. And the, boom, garden tour. <laughs> That's it. I don't, we haven't really done anything. Dahlias are doing okay. I need to get in here though. I got to get on deadheading this one. I, that's something about these is that they cannot forget or let any of these spent flowers go for very long or else we'll lose the flowers. And that would defeat the purpose because, you know, look at it. I mean, they're beautiful. Need to hold on to that. Then the hanging basket, you know, that just got repaired like a week ago, something like that. So it hasn't done much either. I mean, it's starting to fill out and look nice, but still it's going to take a couple weeks to see much of anything out of this. And then it spent a, almost four days in the garage because it was so cold outside. Maybe it was three days. Smells amazing though, which was the whole point. If you remember to the first video where I attempted to get this basket done, I was talking about the fragrance and the smell. That's why I have the dianthus in here, the alyssum, the lobularia, great fragrant plant. Then I added this purple stock in there. The stock has a really sweet, like kind of a spicy sweet smell to it. So when this window over here is open, you can smell it in the entire kitchen. Well, almost the entire kitchen when I'm sitting at the table drinking my coffee or my tea or at the counter, you, that fragrance just wafts into the house. And then when you step outside this door, oh, it's amazing. Oh, and there are some pumpkin seeds coming up because I threw a rotting pumpkin on the ground over here in the fall and never cleaned it up. So that'll be fun. Not going to leave those there. I think that'd be a bad idea. This isn't the appropriate spot for those. I might let some of them keep growing and pop them up, dig up a huge root ball around them and move them somewhere else. Maybe, I don't know, pumpkins take up a ton of space, but they're fine there right now. And then ferns, those have been coming up all month. Nothing new there. And there we have it, April garden tour. That's all done. Quick and easy. Yeah, you know, that's the thing with the weekend vlogs is I feel like I'm out here enough that every weekend kind of see what's going on. So yeah, if nothing drastic has happened, there, there's no reason for a garden tour. With the heat coming in, it's 80s today, 80s tomorrow, and that's gonna like kind of settle into the 70s. But I think we only have a couple nights left where we'll have some lows in the upper 40s. So, I mean, technically I could move the tropicals out now, but I'm gonna give it another week because there have been cold snaps in the beginning of May before. So tropicals are staying in, why bother? Like, I don't wanna have to risk or run the risk of having to move them back in. That would suck. I don't wanna deal with that. However, if I leave this mulch pile on here while it's in the 80s, that's not gonna be great for the bananas. So I'm gonna start working on pulling back the mulch and relocating the excess mulch to the back of my laurel berm because that berm always needs building. Like it always, it's always constantly having some wash off from the rain and everything. So that's where I take all that excess mulch. It'll be good. I can't wait to get that done to start getting some shape and structure back into this garden. And then hopefully, maybe we're supposed to have some stormy days, but maybe there will be time sometime in this video to get some plants in the ground, particularly some sun impatience or something like that. I don't know, I need to focus on the task at hand, which is just mulch. That's it. It's not very exciting. I'm just gonna take this and move it. Do you hope this is entertaining? Probably not, I'm so sorry. Makes me feel so good to have that done, to not have those big piles of mulch in the garden anymore. It's just, it's like a symbol that things are ready to kick off. Down here, it's gonna be like clearly where the biggest noticeable difference is. Like I just mentioned in the prior clip, I normally take all that mulch, load it over here into the gorilla cart, and then I'd spread it on the back of the whorl berm. And I did do that with three cart poles back there. And I also remembered that I really didn't do much for soil building last year out here, because there's a lot of stuff going on. I did last year come in to make sure to put some compost in around the bananas because they really appreciate that. Some compost and some just nice organic materials, alfalfa pellets that have been hydrated. I had powdered kelp, earthworm castings, I know, broken record. I talk about that a lot, but it makes a tremendous difference with the growth in the bananas. I mean, with everything to help build that soil up. I didn't really do that last year though. I just did the compost and was like, that's gonna have to do. And over time there's erosion and soil just, you know, magically disappears when you have it bermed up in an area like this that's cut out with concrete. So I figured, for right now, partially for weed control, I was going to go ahead and actually just spread a lot of what was over here out. So it is mounted up kind of high right now. The thing is the weeds are really bad. I don't have any of my sprays. I use like burnout or I'll do homemade things, but I just thought for right now, I'm just gonna let this sit on here. That will help cook and smother 
the weeds in this area and the rest of them I'm gonna go through and hand pull and spray when I get some more stuff to do that with. It's, it's just part of spring. It's, I don't really mind weeding. I think it's kind of fun. But that lace vine, the stuff that's back there in that corner, that will take off and go crazy if I let it. So I've already started pulling some of that. It's kind of a multi-week process handling that stuff every single spring. But it's good. This is good. Mulch is off of there. Need to get this ground warmed up. In gardening, we talk about mulch and its various purposes. And two of the main purposes keep things more insulated during the winter time, and then it helps to retain moisture and keep the root zone cooler during the summer when it's really, really hot outside. This is in the 80s today. I wanted to get the mulch off there so that the sun could go down there and get the root zone nice and toasty and help get things moving and kicked into action. There are some things that are popping up in here that I was like, that's a weird looking banana. There's one right there. And then another one right here that has more of that dark purple stem on it. I think those might be some of the bikini teeny colocasias, but I don't know for sure. They could just be discolored bananas from temperatures or something like that. I don't know. I have to wait till they put some more leaves out. Usually when the colocasias come up, they come up really super teeny tiny, just little dark burgundy sticks and then they start putting out little leaves and then before you know it, they explode with growth. So I'm not used to them coming up that size, but I also, last year was the first year that I had moved some of those to being inside the banana clump. I did that just kind of for insurance purposes because they're not the easiest colocasias to come by. I don't see them for sale very often. So that's why I thought it would be a good idea to throw some of them in there so that they would have the protection of that mulch mound during the winter time. Just in case we were to have a bad winter and they weren't going to return, then I would be happy that I at least had those in there. So hopefully that's what those are, but I don't, I don't actually know. Also this guy right here, he's made me super sad. Toby, you miss your friend? You miss your friend, Toby? Yeah, he's bummed. He's an only doggy. He's never been an only doggy before. I mean, there was like a one week period after Tucker passed away, but that was about it. You'll be okay, right, Toby? Don't worry, he'll be okay. He gets lots of TLC and attention, lots of playtime, right, Toby? Lots of love, lots and lots of love. Yeah, just ignore me, don't worry about me. The way I do the mulch removal is I like to use a flexible pot. I always hold on to these containers. They're so useful for so many things. And then I take them and lay them down at the base of there. And then I just kind of get my legs in here like so. And I scoop, I just scoop and fill it up. And then I take each one, dump it into the gorilla cart. And then when the gorilla cart gets full, I dump that. The reason I do that is because I, I, it feels easier than shoveling. That's all it is. I just, it seems to go a lot faster. Just take both hands and just scoop and fill those things up. I have a little bit left here to spread. And then, you know, I mean, that's, that's a little bit much. I should probably pull some of that off of there, but for right now it's fine. And then this area over here, I'm about ready to plant up. Actually, I just need to go find some of my amendments and those things. It's getting kind of late though. Can't really tell on camera. It's starting to get dark. So I'll probably hold off on that tomorrow, but I would like to go ahead and start getting the compost, all the stuff I just talked about, getting this built up and ready to go. Yeah, I think that should wait for tomorrow and the irrigation's broken, so I don't wanna plant anything if I can't water it in, but hopefully I'll have that up and running and fixed tomorrow, hopefully. Oh no, my tumor umbrella <laughs> in there. It's all right, it's, I think it looks artistic. I meant for it to be like that, that's on purpose, not really. I also just realized that only people who've been watching this channel since last summer would understand why I called this my tumor umbrella. It's a long story. Getting nice and cloudy out. It's actually, it's been raining for several hours. I did a whole bunch of watering out here yesterday. There isn't much I can do when we're in between storms. And it's supposed to be like this for a while. Whoa, look at that. Those were all <laughs> whirly bird helicopters from the maple trees at the gutter spilled out from the top onto the, oh man, I'm gonna have to get up there and clean that out, aren't I? That's not, I can't just leave that there. Ugh, that's a big old mess. And the problem is if that gets in there and clogs that one up, I don't really know what I would do because this gutter goes underground. So if that gets clogged, what, how am I, though there's something I've never had to think about before. Uh-oh. Well, one thing I'm not going to do is get out a ladder and start messing with my roof when it's raining outside. It's not raining right now. There's a little bit of mist, but it's not too bad. What I think I can do, or I know I can do, is I can at least go through and start placing some annuals. I don't think I'm gonna be able to plant them this week though, because this soil is gonna stay pretty wet for a few days. And I am low on different compost and soil amendments. I ordered a bunch, it'll be here Sunday. That's after this video comes out. In this area, I've been debating what I want to do here. Cause you know, I spent all that time trying to find the orange sun impatience 
last week in that vlog because I wanted to do basically what I did last year and go orange, pink, orange, pink, or pink, orange. I wanted to alternate those sun impatience in the back with the purple Tritoscantia in the front. But it might look kind of cool to just do pink and not even bother with the orange, but I went to all the trouble of finding the orange. I feel like I should go ahead and use them. Sometimes it helps to just grab the plants and space them out how you think you're going to need to use them. This is not the smart way to be picking this up and carrying it around. I should not do this like this. It kind of works. It's holding on all right. Let's see here. These are the compact hot pink sun impatience. I would want them to go from basically right around where this fern is all the way across. That was another reason that I pushed the queen palm back. Uh, what was that, last week? The week before? Was it this week? I don't even know. I get confused because this week's video spans like two actual weeks of filming. These are getting kind of torn up. They're ready to get into the ground. Oh, they're so pretty. Even when they're just sitting here, they make me happy. I forgot, I need to move this. Oh, that is much heavier when it's sopping wet. Ah. You gonna stay put? Yes. You're good there? Okay. Set that one there. Finish that off right about there. Yeah. That works. I have one extra for good luck. That's nice. See, the pink already looks so good. I just don't know if I need the orange, but it's fun having all the extra color. That's the thing. I really like having that extreme color concentrated into one spot. So I would need one, two, three, four of those orange sun and patience to stick in between those. There's those right here. So I can grab one, two. Is that gonna stand up? Nope. Got that I did like these to be a little bit staggered as much as I can. It's hard to kind of pull off how I'm going to do that when I don't have the sable palms planted. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. Orange is definitely necessary. Sometimes I have to see it to make my mind up. Would have looked beautiful either way. This is just making it look just, it's just extra. That's all it is. Having both the colors helps them like basically stand out together. The pink helps the orange stand out. The orange helps the pink stand out. And this ginger that's coming up here has orange flowers on it. So I think that that would be a good way to go with that. But yeah, I am getting ahead of myself. I need to get those sable palms planted in the ground first because those take priority and the planting those is gonna make a fairly big mess. And I'm gonna want some of these planted kind of close to those sable palms too, to these scrub palms that are right here. Because the sun and patients have a pretty decent spread on them, I wanna say 24 to 30 inches is the spread on the compact variety of sun and patients. That's the reason I stagger them. So see the pink is just a smidge in front of the orange. That way they don't become too smushed together. If they do start to grow together, not the end of the world, they're annuals, just give them a cut back. These really look best when they get a decent prune, probably around mid to late July anyways. So that's not a huge issue. I want them to have a really nice tight growth together. And then the Tradescantia, doing it a little bit differently this year. I know last year I did the orange and pink thing and uh, with the YouTube stuff, it's you know nice to mix it up. I didn't really spend much time outside last year, didn't get to enjoy it very much and I loved how it looked. So I'm doing it again and hopefully that's not a problem. I know things can become boring and redundant having that monotony doing the same thing every single year. But there's some things I'm gonna be doing to try and mix it up. For one, I'm using the variegated Tritoscantia. I still have some of the regulars in here. I'll explain why. See, the beautiful variegated pink stripe is what they're calling it, Tritoscantia paleta. These sometimes can be little jerks. Like with a lot of variegated plants, sometimes this specific Tritoscantia will, well, one, they'll revert, which that's not the end of the world. Not a huge deal there but I just have never noticed them to grow anywhere near as vigorously as just the regular Tritoscantia paleta, the regular purple heart plant. Those grow wonderfully. The variegated ones, not always the same. When I've grown them, which is, I mean, off and on, like when I've been able to find them for like the last, I don't know, 12 to 15 years, I've just noticed they tend to rot out easier than the regular ones do. So that's why I do still have some of the regular ones mixed in here. I went one, two, one, two, one, and then I don't, I didn't have enough to keep going with two. So there's one there. I don't have room to put two more of the variegated ones over there anyway, so. That should the variegated ones fail, the regular ones will fill in this spot wonderfully just as they are. They're just kind of like a fallback and a fail safe because essentially I just, I don't necessarily trust the variegated ones. We will see though. Hopefully they won't rot out and they won't be little brats and they'll just do what they need to do without causing trouble. But just in case, 
So there's that backup. Last year, I scattered these, or alternated them, I should say, with the, uh, what was it, lemon coral sedum. And uh, that looked absolutely beautiful, but the Tradescantia, that outgrew that lemon coral sedum so quickly. So I'm not gonna bother with that this year. And if I were to go with another sedum in here, I think I would go with the lemon ball because that is a fully hardy perennial sedum to this zone. Why spend the money on an annual when there's a perennial that looks pretty similar, right? I mean, it's not quite as vibrant and it's not quite as vigorous of a grower and it does rot more easily like a sedum normally would with a lot of water, but you, you get what I'm saying. I think I kind of messed up my logic there. Maybe it wouldn't be the best option here. I don't know, it doesn't matter. I'm not using it over here this year. There's still a few other things that might look good over here. Some blew my mind volvulus, look at that. Look at those flowers, they're so pretty. I've wanted to get my hands on these for a while. These have a nice slightly mounding, but more of a trailing habit. These are excellent plants for the south, for areas that just have really hot climates. They absolutely love the heat. And I wanted to put those over here into this corner. It doesn't look like much right now, but someday it will. Maybe I'll just stick with having one right there and then use the other two in other spots in the garden. Just that way they're more spread out. That might look better. The patch of blue is way too heavy right there. Then it doesn't exist anywhere else. That's that's a little bit random and chaotic, isn't it? I don't know, just fun stuff to think about. I will, the spacing on these is not exact. This is just me playing around with the plants, having fun plant time. The stagger on these would be a little bit more dramatic. So I don't want them to grow together too quickly. The way they're staggered right now, they'll grow together very quickly, the sun impatience. And then the Tritoscantia may come forward a smidge. Those grow nicely over this edge here and they helped fill it in and really did a great job last year with keeping all of the soil and erosion and just muck from washing down into this. This is all drainage right here. All this has drains underneath it that carry the water away from the house. Every year I go through the shovel and I clean it out, which I need to do this year, but it is nowhere near as bad as it's been in years past. You've been watching for a while, you know, this has gotten, like by the time spring comes around, this gets really gross. From right here and forward to that edge, gets really muddy, but I think it was because I had the Tradescantia in here last year and it filled in this area so nicely. That had to have played a role in helping keeping a lot of the runoff from washing down in there. That's another reason I want to repeat that process. I want to make sure those are there again this year because it just, it made things nice and tidy and clean. And again, there are plenty of perennials I could put here, but this is this is what I like. Oftentimes, the Tradescantia paletta, that'll come back for me. The last winter was really, really bad. At least, well, there were like a two week period that was really bad, I should say. The rest of it was fine. It was a really mild winter other than those like two weeks. So uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I would be shocked if any of the Tradescantia that was planted in here last year returned. So I went ahead and got more. I was like, we'll just try it again, but with the variegated ones and get lots of color going on over here. I'm excited to get these in the ground. I wish I could do it right now, but it just seems like a bad idea, especially when in like two days I'm gonna have some soil amendments and things coming in the mail that will help with how these grow, so. Okay, well that was fun. Now what, what do you guys wanna do? I don't have any plans, everything's stopping wet. Really feel like I'm forgetting something over here though. There's still something missing. Oh, the Rolia, 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 how do you guys say it? Need to go get that. Also, walking, very painful, all that squatting with the mulch, I have no idea how incredibly out of shape I've gotten over the last year. Mucho Morado, Mexican Petunia. More fun plants for areas that have nice warm weather, particularly warm evenings. Rillias don't bloom wonderfully if you don't have warmth at nighttime, which there's no shortage of here during the summertime. Actually, I have two of these. One of them's in the mail, or will be in the mail soon from Proven Winners. And then I grabbed this other one here. I wanted to mix more purple up in this because I'll have the purple in the front from the Tritoscanta and then the pink and the orange. But I also have to remember like space is also an issue. I can't just go dumping whatever I want into this area. But I was thinking I could do the Rolia right about where that Evolvulus is and then put the Evolvulus right in front of it. This might be sloped too heavily to actually set them out in place. I think that might just fall over. Yeah, so that's gonna grow up with a shape similar to like a really small oleander and they have lots of light purple flowers that go along the stems and out the tops with that blue in the front and then I would do the same right over here. So that would just kind of frame it in and add more color. Cause who doesn't love more color? I always love having lots of color. Life is a kaleidoscope. Also, I just remembered when I was down there seeing what those pedicits are doing. I never gave an update on the dogwood in the front after the snow. There it is, looking pretty good. I really, I don't think it skipped a beat. It's been several days, so I think the flowers are just starting to naturally 
die off on this. It's been in bloom for a few weeks, so that's to be expected. But within, I'd say two or three days after that snow, still didn't see any brown spots, which should have been fairly instantaneous. That's why I assume that the flowers are just weathering off naturally, how they're supposed to when they've been on the plant for a few weeks. I also moved the palms out, got the adenidias over there, and then I have my foxtail up here. I'm still treating for spider mites though, so they won't be going out to the back for a little while, hence why they look so incredibly, horribly, terribly sad. For the most part, those spider mites really haven't been bad. I did the one treatment, well, I guess it was a two-step treatment. I did a whole video on it. That was several weeks ago. Well, I'll link it at the end in those cards that show up at the end of the videos. Ooh, I'm sneezing. Anyways, uh, but just like two days ago, I started to notice that there's some webbing showing up, particularly in the foxtail palm, because the foxtail palm, I wasn't able to spray like I was the Ed and Nidia. It's not in the house. I would have gotten the spray all over the carpet, all over the wood, all over the walls, and it was too cold to bring it out. So I went ahead and I moved it out here. I laid it down outside and just absolutely drenched it with spray. Now I'm letting that spray do its thing and then I'll give it another blast with that anti-transpirant, the wilt proof, to help seal up, put a nice waxy cuticle on top of the cuticle of the plants that the spider mites can't bite down in there and then they just die. They starve. Yeah, they're pretty sad looking. But that's what happens when you have spider mites that bad. And also normally I have these set up in my home during the winter where they're sitting in pots that look identical to this that are lifted up on bricks. So there's like a, I'd say a six to, no, probably about an eight inch reservoir underneath them with wicking cord in there. And then I even, I put bubblers, like aquarium bubblers in the basin so I can water them heavily. The water stays oxygen rich and then they can keep wicking that moisture back up. But I just, I wasn't able to lift anything that heavy when I brought these in. Really, I mean, up until like maybe a couple weeks ago, I wasn't able to lift anything like this. So didn't do that this year. And well, that's, that's what they look like when I just water them like a normal house plant. Edinias tend to be thirsty and heat lovers. So not always the best in the house during the winter, at least not in my house. The only spot in my house I have space for them is right in there in the entryway and uh, there's not much sun. It's morning light, that's about it. But when I've had them it's in that setup with the wicking cord and the bubblers, they did a lot better. It's fine, it's not a big deal. I'm just happy they're still alive and that I am too, so it's okay. But I'm not ashamed at all to show these. Not one bit because I know a lot of y'all who are growing Edinidias. This is what they look like when you bring them back out for the spring. It's not just me. Don't be a liar. Do not lie to me. <laughs> I only say that because it's like the same thing at the botanicals and like people who have professional greenhouses still. If you don't have the warmth and lots of light, then they get kind of shabby looking. That's why I like the Alexander palms. They don't do that. And the foxtail too. It's a trooper. It just keeps doing its thing all winter long in the house. It's so happy. I have had one Edenidia in the past that I think was just like a super Edenidia. It just grew and grew and grew no matter what I did. And I grew it the same as I've been growing these, but it grew much more vigorously. I don't know how or what the deal was, what made the difference, because I really did everything the same. Pretty much the same soil blood, watering care, everything. But it grew very quickly to the point where I had to get rid of it. Didn't fit in the house anymore. Yeah, sometime in the next week or so, or really probably hopefully in the next few days, I'll come in here, enrich the soil, get some compost in there, some palm gain. It's been a couple months since I put any fertilizer in these and get into a routine where they're being watered more often because I didn't, I never finished my thought earlier. The way I was watering these since they didn't have the reservoir underneath them is they were getting a three gallon watering can container about once a week. That's it. I would always put just a little squirt of seaweed fertilizer in it uh, and that's it and that I don't think was quite enough. Like they kept growing. Every single one of those trunks, I put out two new fronds, not that it matters because they got devoured. And that's about how they usually are for me. Even with the reservoir, I usually get maybe up to four fronds on them. So it wasn't that far off. Maybe a 50% decline in how well they normally grow for me. But again, spider mites. That definitely put a dent in their growth and their appearance. They'll be all right. Like I said, it's not unusual for them to look pretty crummy when they come out in the springtime. And then they flush back out and start to look nice again when the heat arrives. Even the ones that I pay to have stored in a big greenhouse, they usually come back looking kind of shabby. It's so pretty. So pretty, but I need to trim this. I'm knocking my head on the branches. Hey, look, got some blooms on the chives inside the shamrock holly that I don't think survived that uh, minus five blast. There might be some green in there. We have to give it some time and see what happens there. I like how just two days after I was talking about how I wasn't going to do a garden tour because there wasn't much to talk about, all, all kinds of things are flushing out with new growth and flowers. Totally could have done a garden tour. I guess I still can do an April garden tour, but it won't come out until May. 
I don't know, I'm gonna think on that one. According to the weather, there's another storm moving in in like five minutes. I'm starting to feel it too. So this really does have to be it for right now. Hopefully the rain will go away. Can get something done over here, that would be fun. I really wanna get my hands dirty. I wanna get some stuff planted. I'm so happy baseball's back. Right, Toby? It's so exciting, right, Toby? He's feeling much better, by the way. <laughs> this is what Toby looks like when he's happy. Right, Toby? Yeah, you good boy. All right, you can go to sleep now. Just an adjustment, that's all. I forgot to mention while I was out here. Is it raining? Can we go out there, maybe? Toby, you wanna come outside? Doesn't that sound like fun? Look, Toby, let's go outdoors. All right, I think we need to get him a friend sometime sooner than later. For starters, hopefully we can get it planted up next week at some point or this weekend. I also, I remembered I don't have water. So it's a good thing I didn't. I almost just grabbed my shovel and I was like, I'm gonna plant the stuff in the rain. Glad I didn't do that because I would need to water them in. So hopefully the irrigation, like the, not just the irrigation, the plumbing is the whole like leaky situation. So everything outside shut off. Hopefully that'll be fixed soon enough. And then can get these in the ground. And I don't like digging in wet soil either because it can create a bowl in the ground that just doesn't drain quite right. Although the soil in my garden beds is pretty rich. Like it's so rich I can't grow things like sedums and uh, Russian sage plants that tend to flop. And by sedums, I mean the tall sedums, not like the lemon coral like we talked about earlier. The upright hardy sedums, they, it's just, there's too much nutrient and they just, they are very unhappy over here. So I probably could, doesn't matter, I'm not doing it, but I probably could go ahead and start some planting. I also have a couple other plants for this area though that I forgot about. Hanging out over here under the umbrella. Some verbena, this is Superbino Royale Peachy King, which is one of my favorite verbenas. I just love the color on it. It's a nice soft, orangey, light pink color, which I think pairs very nicely with this purple. Doesn't that look nice together? At least I think it, okay, no tag on that one. Does the other one have a tag? I like to be able to give y'all the names of things when I can. So this is the Superbina Violet Ice. Isn't it pretty? Oh, it's so pretty. But the idea with those was to have that Roya back here, the Metro Morado, which is a Roya, bleh, which is a Roya simplex, but it's not supposed to spread. So that is kind of a thing with those plants. They can really take over. This one isn't supposed to do that. I'm planting it as an annual anyway, so I'm not worried about that. But by having that, that relia here, then another one over there coming up just a little bit behind that pink sun and patient with the patches of the Superbina Peachy King Royale and then the Violet Ice. This names, it's so hard to keep them all straight. I think that will look nice having that patch of color right around here and then right around there. So that's going to come up and sort of frame things into sort of a rainbow. Not really going for a rainbow, but that's generally the shape or an arch essentially by having that wall back there of just orange and pink with the solid purple in the front that's going to make those spots stand out they'll help highlight everything that's there and kind of i think just make things really bright and colorful that is the plan anyways i don't know if any of this matters i haven't even planted them yet but it's still fun to sit back and look at them and think about it talk about it a little bit you know do the whole plant nerd thing oh my gosh this thing smells so good i think i've gotten just about everything done that i can this week because you know I mean, look at it out there. Also, this orchid right here, still blooming. I've been talking about this one since late December. I think I purchased this December 28th, and it was bloomed out to about right here. It's about three quarters of the way fully bloomed out, and it's still doing its thing. So for really probably five months that this plant has held on to its flowers. How amazing is that? I wish that these super Mary cloned, super hybridized, the ones that are mass produced and go out to the big box stores. I wish they had the cultivar names on them because I would like more of these in my life. That's one of the tricky things with the Phalaenopsis orchids is they're so mass produced and there's so many different cultivars out there that there could easily be 10 or 15, even 20 that look nearly identical to this one, but maybe don't have the same growing behavior. That's unfortunate. That's why they need to give them names. Put a label on the plant. That would be really nice. And even, oh, you're not gonna be able to see that. Let me get my hand behind there. You can kind of see it. Looks like it's starting to put up another little flower spike out of its stem there. Like it's not already working hard enough to keep those flowers going. Absolutely love it. One of my favorites. Want to make sure I give the rest of the plant updates because I think I didn't do that last week. Did I? I'm pretty sure everything was just shopping. Gloriosum. Look at that leaf. Nice big leaf coming up there. The Anthyrum back here. You're gonna show yourself. It's looking good. Lots of healthy little nubs popping up out of the soil. More orchids starting to open up, which is very exciting. They're taking their sweet time though. I think that might've been because of the shears on the window though. 
maybe they weren't getting quite enough light. Oh, and then one other thing. I did lose my patience and rip all the plastic down. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna move the plants out. And then I was like, stop it. Have to wait one more week. And then in the process, I accidentally tore down part of the ceiling insulation, which is fine. That's not a big deal. That'll go back up there, no problem. Now at least I have easy access to everything and can get them ready to go outside. Well, I don't really know what I need to do to get them ready. I just, they just have to go outside. That's pretty much it, but I do still think it'd be a good idea to wait a week, not just for a stable forecast, but also because like I'm pretty sure I mentioned before, the trees need to flush out. There's no shade to put these plants in. I don't want to take them from the grow lights out into the sun. That wouldn't be very good for them. Oh, I see a new leaf popping out in the tie. That's great. I don't even know what this new leaf looks like because it's up there facing the ceiling. Hopefully it's pretty. I don't think it's got any scorch on it. It is really close to those bulbs though. So, so, so true. Is there a pumpkin around here anywhere? Oh, there she is. There she is, pumpkin. You wanna say hi? You haven't really been in the video at all. You sleeping? You sleepy baby girl. Okay, well nice seeing you, pumpkin. I'm gonna leave you alone, let you sleep. All right, well that's going to do it. I did do some deadheading on these. I need to do some more. That's gonna be a constant thing. That'll be like a weekly thing, I'm sure, doing the deadheading on these dahlias, because I mean, they're, they're so big and fluffy. Lots and lots and lots of flowers to make sure to take off of these. It's only been like two days and I just have to keep going and pulling those things out. Everybody's doing well. Having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. Comment down below. Love talking to everybody. Suggestions, always appreciated. I mean, I already have the plants, but I'm still, I appreciate suggestions. It's fun seeing everybody's creativity down in the comments. Hey, pumpkin. Did I mess something up? Yeah, I need to make a clarification. Hey, editing Jeff here. I need to talk. Look, it's so bright and sunny because it's the morning that this video comes out. I was editing and uh, there were just a few important things that I forgot to mention. One, I forgot that the reason I ordered the Evolvulus, it's, it, so I ordered the plants, let me back up, order the plants in the winter time, in late fall into winter time, and I know what I'm going to do with them when I order them. Then sometimes when they come in the mail, I totally forget. And I'm just like, yay, plants. This is why writing things down is a good idea. So the Evolvulus I actually got to put over here on my hill, over here. It's a really dry area underneath that Thuja, the green giant Arborvitae that's right there. They like dry conditions. So that's not supposed to be there. That seemed like a great idea because it's fun and colorful, but that's not supposed to be there. That's coming out, but the verbena, those were intended for the spot. The reason I wanted to make that clarification was because I don't want anybody to think that it's a great idea to take an ovalvulus, that pretty plant with the blue flowers, and plant that right next to Aurelia. Aurelias really like water. You can even plant them in bog style into your ponds. I'll have a drip running directly to it to make sure it gets all that water it needs but I just, I don't want anyone to think that this is a good idea. That's a bad idea, don't do that. Sometimes you can get away with those things by using drip, which was my initial idea. Well, not initial idea. The idea I came up with for getting my original idea, but have drip to that, not to that. That, bad. Don't do that. <laughs> the volvulus would probably rot out. And then the last thing is that I do have an order of lantana coming sometime soon, at, or an order of uh, just several more annuals. I was gonna wait until next week to mention it, but I just figured like a week is a week away. I think it would look nice to pull that Tritus Cantu forward just a little bit and have a row of pretty colorful lantana that goes across the front of this in between those Sun Impatients and the Tritus Cantia. That's all, okay. Back to the video, the end of the video. I have spent a lot of time talking about this spot today in this video. Sorry about that. It's just, it's how my brain works. This is the things I do, stand around and just talk about my plants for a really long time. Hopefully I'll be able to handle this section sometime in the next couple of days. Then I'll be able to come back here and tackle this area. And uh, this area, I'm still kind of waiting for things to get moving because there are these colocasias, which this is. It's starting to open up a leaf on here. Let's see if I can get back there. I was speculating earlier and I wasn't positive, but that is definitely one of the bikini teeny colocasias. That's great. Looks like there's one, two, you can't really see if there's another one right there, three, four, and uh, five of those coming up in that clump. So even if the ones that were growing right here, even if those don't come back, at least I have those. I'm really happy about that. That's a relief. Anyways, I don't want to mess with this area too terribly much, but I want to give it a couple more weeks to see if the colocasias that were further forward I want to see if those are going to come up. And if not, does he gurring? I want to see if those are gurring to come up. Well, 
That is the truth though. And if they're, if they don't come up, then I have more sun impatience that'll go in this area. More gingers started popping up over there. Oh my gosh. Is this showing on camera? Holy gross. No. Are you seeing this? You see all these little dots? Those are all slugs. They go all the way down the side of the house. At least they're tiny. But that's still nasty. I don't think so. We're going to have to do something about that. I don't know what, but we're going to have to figure out something. Putting out a bunch of the bug and slug bait along the perimeter of the house here. That would probably do the trick. I'm going to get on top of that. Well, no, I'm not. That's a lie. I don't think I have any. But I'll get some, and that's... Ugh, that's a lot of slugs. All right, that's enough. Like I said, everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.